Hi there and welcome to this video. Thanks for clicking on. This is the next video in the series looking at some predicted questions based on the advanced information for Edexcel Maths A-Level Paper 1, which is on the 7th of June. Hope your revision is going well. Let's get into the video. So before we get started on this one, if I could ask you at some point, if you're finding the content of this video useful and helpful, do go and uh, give it a like and subscribe, do all that good stuff, share it with your friends, that would be brilliant. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to start with the transformations of graph questions. It's question six because it's just taken from a previous paper, but this is a transformations of graph question. So we're given this function here, which is um, a mod graph, and we're being asked to sketch the y equals f of x plus one, where we've applied the transformation inside. We've added one to the x value and then plotted the graph. So this is going to affect the x coordinates because if we had f of x and then added one, that that would affect the y coordinates and that would be a shift of 0 1 so the whole graph would shift up when we've got f of x plus 1 inside this uh, affects the x coordinates and it's going to go minus 1 0 so everything is going to go 1 to the left so this 3 is going to go 1 to the left minus 1 is going to go 1 to the left and we can see this coordinate here of 1a we're told that a is below 0 so it's 1 along in the x direction a down if we're shifting it one to the left it's going to come and sit on the y-axis so now we can have a go at sketching the graph it's just going to come down through uh, two and minus two and then this place here is where the v is going to happen and that that place there that's just going to be a because we've shifted everything to the left so it says indicate um any points of intersection with the axes so that's what we've done there the x-axis and the y-axis right um part b we've got y is equal to f of with the modulus on the inside so these mod lines if we have the mod of three then that's just going to be a three the mod lines only come into effect when it's minus between the lines and it just means that you ignore the minus and just um, take the absolute size of three if we think of minus three below zero regardless of the fact that it's below it's just the sheer size of it it is three below so we just ignore the negative so when these lines uh, mod lines are on the inside we've not got to worry about x being positive because it would still give us the same graph but when x is negative we can feed negative values in but the mod lines mean that you read them as positive so they will have the same y value as for the right hand side when x is positive so what's going to happen when it's on the mod on the inside is the graph is going to come down the same as it is but then um, on the left when x is negative negative values are going to go in but they're just going to be read as the positive value so you get that reflection in the y-axis so this goes through at three and reflected it will be minus three this is one a and so this over here will be minus one a and this point here will still be b okay now we are told what the function is it is the mod of x minus 1 and minus 2 so just taking the mod of x minus 1 the lines being on the outside so you would draw the line uh, x equals um, y equals x minus 1 and then instead of taking it down to the minus 1 y axis intercept that would reflect there and go through the one and then we've taken that graph and shifted it down to places with the minus two so we can see the graph here and then we've just shifted it down two places so the a value is going to be the minus two and um, the the b value we can get from having to think about what the equation of each part of the graph is so this part of the graph is where we have got 
x minus 1 minus another 2. So that would be y is equal to x minus 3. And on the other side, we have got um, the minus x plus 1 and then minus 2. So when you want the equation of the left hand side of the, the modulus, you can just put minus into this mod, which will give us a minus x and a minus minus 1, which will give us plus 1 and then minus 2. So tidying that up, that is y equals minus x minus 1. So where does this graph have a y-axis intercept? At b at minus 1. So a is equal to minus 2 and b is equal to minus 1. For part D, find the value of x for which f of x is equal to 5x. So we need to add on to the graph, the graph of y is equal to 5x. Now y is equal to 5x is a steep line that goes through the origin. So that's y equals 5x. Now because the gradient of this line was less than 5, it's only going to have one intercept there. So for part C, we just need to find the x value where minus x minus 1 equals 5x. So minus 1 will equal 6x and x will equal minus 1 sixth. Here's another transformations of graphs question. We've got this function here and for part A we're being asked to sketch the mod of it. So f of x and then take the modulus. We're just going to worry about where between those lines goes negative. So that is this section of the graph because y is negative when it's below the x-axis. So we're going to sketch the graph and it's going to be not worry about it until it gets to the x-axis so that will come down at three and this curves round like here so that's going to reflect up and go through like that so instead of going through at minus two it's going to reflect up and go through at plus two for part b we're being asked to sketch the inverse function now inverse functions are a reflection in the line y equals x. So if we put the line y equals x on, so that would be a diagonal line like this. So when we draw it, we've got to be reflecting the function in that diagonal line. So the 3 here will be reflected and go up to here on the y-axis 3. The minus 2 will come here on the x-axis as minus 2. So you're going to get a similar shaped graph. It's going to be reflected in the line y equals x. And it's going to go through like that at 3 and minus 2. That says indicate clearly the coordinates of the points where it crosses the axis. So all we need to do is put in those key points um, where it crosses the, each of the axes. Then for part C, half f of 3x. Well, the 3 on the inside is going to times the x coordinates by a third and the half on the outside is going to times the y coords by a half. So we've got to apply both of those changes to the two points we've got. So for 3 naught times in the x coordinate by a third it's going to go to 1 but times in the, the y coordinate by a half it's going to stay at um, 0. And doing the same to the 0 minus 2 we're going to times the x coordinate by a third so that's going to stay at 0 and the minus 2 times by a half is going to go to minus 1. So for part c, I'll draw it here, it's going to go through 1 and minus 1. So it's going to come down the same and go through there. This is a question involving trig and differentiation. We're being asked to express this, which has um, two trig ratios in the form of r cos 3x plus alpha, which has just then therefore got one trig ratio, and then we can use that form to go on and solve. So we're going to use our addition formula that you get in the formula book, cos a plus or minus b is equal to cos a cos b and then for cos it's the other way around minus plus sine a 
sine b. Now we've got plus here, which is this plus, so we're going to use this minus. So if we write the thing that we're trying to express from the question, 2 cos 3x minus 3 sine 3x, and we're going to make that equivalent to r cos 3x cos alpha, and then it'll be minus. I'm going to take that r, which will be times both of these terms, take that into both terms, uh, sine 3x sine alpha. And now what you do is you equate coefficients. There's a 2 in front of the cos 3x. And what goes with the cos 3x, it is r and cos alpha. So we can equate and say that 2 is equal to r cos alpha. And then we've already got a minus here. So we can just take the 3. The 3 is equal to r sine alpha. Now, how do we get r and alpha? We square and add. So 2 squared plus 3 squared, 9 plus 4 is 13, is equal to r squared. And then we could take that out as a common factor, and it would be cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha. Cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So that will give us that r is root 13. And then I usually do um, r sine alpha over r cos alpha. What's equivalent to them? It's the 3 over 2. The r's cancel, so inverse tan of 3 over 2 is equal to alpha. And if you're in radians on your calculator, alpha comes out to be 0 0.983. So let's write the question. It's this 2 cos 3x minus 3 sine 3x is equal to root 13, which is r cos of 3x plus 0.983. So that's part A. Um, part B, show that f dash, so the differential of this function here, can be written in that form. So if f of x is that e to the 2x cos 3x, we can see that it's a product of two functions. So we're going to be using the product rule, and we can see each of the um, terms that being times together are a function of a function, so we're also we're going to be using the chain rule. So part B, f dash, the product rule is the first, differential of second. Now, because it's a function of a function, we differentiate with respect to the cos first, so that will be minus sine 3x. We've left alone on the inside, so then we need to multiply by the differential of the 3x, which will just multiply by 3 on the front. And then first, differential of second, plus second, differential of first. So the 2e to the 2x is differentiating the e to the 2x, and then it will be cos 3x. Uh, now what we can do here is take um, e to the 2x out as a common factor. Now this term is the positive one, so I'll put that first. It's cos 3x, and then it's minus 3 sine 3x. Now we can see what we've got in here is exactly the same what we've been using in terms of part A. So this is e to the 2x, and our r is root 13 cos of 3x plus our 0.983. So we can just put the r on the front, e to the 2x of cos 3x plus 0.983. So that is part B. Part C, hence or otherwise, find the smallest positive value for x, which the curve has a turning point. Um, now, for a turning point, we're going to let the differential equal 0. So C, f dash of x is equal to 0 at turning point. So the thing that we've just found in part B, we're going to equate that to 0. And um, it can only be 0 when the cos part of the function, if you think of e to the x or e to the 2x will be that graph, it's not going to um, be equal to 0. It's going to be the cos part that will equal 0. So cos of 3x plus 0.983 is equal to 0. Now, if we think of the cos graph, where does that equal to 0? Um, it could be minus pi by 2 or 
pi by 2. Now we're going to be saying that the, the angle, the 3x plus the 0.983 has to equal one of these. Now we're not going to have the minus one because we're going to be rearranging to get x on its own and it tells us that it's got to be a positive value. So it's got to be pi over 2. So 3x will equal pi by 2 minus the 0.983 and then x will be that divided by 3 and that comes out to be 0.196. This is a differentiation, iteration and stationary points question and they're all listed on one line in the advanced information. So we've got this curve y which is the product of these two functions and it's valid between naught and pi by 4. We're trying to get to the equation 4k plus sine 4k minus 2 where k is the x coordinate of the minimum point at p and to find maximum and minimum points we need to differentiate. So we need to take our curve and differentiate. So the y is given as the product of these two functions so we need to use the product rule which is first differential of second now the tan 2x is a function of a function. We need to use the chain rule and we differentiate with respect to the outside function first. Differential of tan is sec squared 2x. Leave alone on the inside but now because we haven't differentiated for the fact that that's 2x we must multiply by the differential of the inside function which is 2. So we've done first differential of second plus second differential of first, differential of first is 2 and second is just tan 2x and this is equal to 0 at p which is our minimum point. Um, now we're trying to get to this equation here from what we've just differentiated and what to do is use the fact that sec squared is 1 over cos squared and tan is sine over cos. So if we just put that 2 there on the front and it's into 2x minus 1. Replace the sec squared with 1 over cos squared and then the tan with 2 sine 2x over cos 2x is equal to 0. Now we very nearly got the same common denominator but if we just times the second uh, fraction with cos 2x over cos 2x, we'll then have a cos squared 2x on the bottom, we'll have a common denominator. So just multiplying this bracket in, you're going to have 4x minus 2 plus 2 sine 2x cos 2x, and that's all over the common denominator cos squared 2x equal to zero at our minimum point. Now that's only going to happen when the numerator is equal to zero because if you cross multiply by that cos squared 2x uh, we're going to have to have that the numerator is equal to zero. Now you might see where this is going here because we've got what is similar to our double angle formula. If you think of sine 2x which is equal to 2 sine x cos x going from a single angle here to the double we've actually got 2 sine 2x cos 2x so proportionally that is the same as sine 4x so on the top here we've got 4x minus 2 plus sine 4x and that's equal to 0 at our minimum point and then at p x is equal to k, so just replacing x with k, we've, we've got it that 4k, and then put the sine term next, minus 2 is equal to 0. So we've done it for our six marks. Now we're next told that the iterative formula is being used with x0 equal to 0 0.3. Now just in case they asked you to find this iterative formula, you can see that what they've done is start with this equation, take the sine 4k and the minus 2 to the other side and then divide it by that minus 4 to get that k which is x if you like uh, um, on its own and use that as to get the next one along we are trying to use this iterative formula to home in and find the root. Now it's saying start with x0 being 0.3 so how to do this quickly on your calculator is if you type in 0.3 and then press equals, that 0.3 would uh, appear at the bottom of your screen on the right. And then type in all of this 
but when you get to the x just write um, sine 4 and then use the answer key because once that 0 0.3 is in the bottom of the the screen it is then held as the calculator as the answer so then if you press equals you will get x1 is equal to 0 0.26702 to four decimal places now if you just um, leave that will be the answer there in the bottom of the screen and you press equals again you will get 8x2 because your calculator will just replace whatever's in that answer position on your calculator as the um, x there in the formula so x2 comes out to be 0 0.2809 x3 is 0 0.2 two seven four six so each time you press equals you just got to stop and write them down x4 is 0.2774 so that's part b now part c says show that k is equal to 0 0.277 to three significant figures now while you're pressing equals you can just repeatedly press it and the root does settle down as the 0 0.277 to three significant figures but what you have to do here because this k is the giving us an answer and a root to this this uh, 4k plus sine 4k minus 2 will be some sort of graph that at k is equal to 0 0.277 it goes from um, being underneath the x-axis to being above so we're homing in and finding that root where it equals to naught if you think about when you differentiate and find the minimum point when you equate the differential equal to zero that is the root of that equation so what we need to do is just show that either side of this root there is a change of sign so for part d now what you do you can just go either side of the root but what i do is just go to the next column along and do half above half below so if you to write k is equal to 0 0.2775 and k is equal to 0 0.2765 and put them into this equation to show that you have a change of sign so when k is that first one the 4k plus sine 4k minus 2 is equal to um, 0 0.0057 4k equal to 0 0.2775 and then when it's equal to the other one the lower one k is equal to minus 0 0.12348 seven when k is the 0.2765 so this shows that we've got a change of sign and the function is continuous across that interval continuous so we have a root at k is equal to 0 0.277 got a factor theorem question here we're trying to find this curve c given that when we've differentiated we've got this function uh, we've got the y-axis intercept is minus 12 and we're told that x plus 4 is a factor so the first thing we need to do is integrate back up given that we've differentiated and got 6x squared plus ax minus 23 so if we integrate that add one on and divide by the new power minus 23x and then plus our constant of integration now we're told that this curve goes through the y-axis intercept at minus 12 at that point to be on the y-axis you're going to have x is 0 minus 12 so when we feed 0 in here the x terms will be 0 and it's just telling us that the minus 12 on the end will be our constant of integration our c so we've got the f of x is equal to tidying these fractions 2x cubed plus ax squared over 2 
minus 23x and then minus 12. So we use the first two bits of information. Now that we are told that x plus 4 is a factor, if you think about dividing that in, it's going to divide in exactly so that we could write the factor times by. Now when that di divides in, you're going to have 2x squared to give you this 2x cubed and then plus whatever it is. When you times those two together, it's going to equal zero when this bracket is zero. So f of minus 4, because the x value here that would make that bracket zero would be minus 4. So all we need to do is put in minus 4 and that would equal zero. So f of minus 4, putting minus 4 in, minus 4 cubed is minus 64 times 2 is minus 128 and then plus when x is minus 4, minus 4 all squared is 16, 16 divided by 2 will be 8a and then it will be minus 4 times minus 23 will be plus 92 and then minus 12 is equal to zero. If we tidy that all up, we'll get that 8a is equal to 48 and therefore a is equal to 6. So just writing it back in its simplest form, we've now got that f of x is equal to 2x cubed. Now if a is 6, 6 divided by 2 will give us 3x squared minus 23x minus 12. This next question is a differentiation and turning points um, question. We're being told that we've got this curve here with a max at P and a min at Q. And we're being asked to show that the X coordinates of P and Q uh, are the solutions to this equation here in terms of tan. So when we're looking for um, max and min points, we're going to be doing the differential is equal to zero. It's where the gradient is equal to zero at the turning points where the max and min happen. So we need to differentiate. And what we've got here is a quotient. So we use the quotient rule, which is bottom uh, differential of top. Now the top, the 4 sine 2x is a function of a function. Differentiating with respect to the sine, we're going to get cos 2x leave alone on the inside, multiply it by the differential of the inside which is times by 2, but that will just times by that 4 on the front and get 8. So it's bottom differential of top minus top differential of bottom and the differential of bottom, the root 2 will come down e to the root 2 x minus 1 and then the top will be 4 sine 2 x and then that's all over bottom squared which is e to the root 2 x minus 1 all squared. Now that equals to 0 at the turning point. Now that can only happen when the numerator is equal to 0. Uh, we can cross multiply that denominator and just find where the numerator is going to equal to 0. Now in the numerator I can see that I've got a common factor of the exponential function and I've also got um, a 4. So I can take 4 out e to the root 2 x minus 1 and then it will be 2 cos 2x minus root 2 sine 2x is going to equal 0 at the turning point. Now the exponential term on the front, that can't equal 0. If you think of your exponential graphs, that can't equal 0. So it's only going to equal 0 when the 2 cos 2x minus root 2 sine 2x is equal to 0. So just rearranging that, 2 cos 2x is equal to root 2 sine 2x cross multiply and get 2 over root 2 is equal to tan 2x and if I just rationalize that denominator I'll get 2 root 2 over 2 is tan 2x and then they will cancel and we'll get that tan 2x is equal to root 2. So this is going to be the equation that we need to solve to find x and then that will give us the x-coordinates of those turning points. 
So in part B, we've got to use our answer that we've just found to find the x coordinates of the minimum points when we have taken this f of x graph and performed some transformations on them. But first of all, what we'll need to do is actually find the x coordinates of the turning points of the original graph, f of x. So at p and q, we know that tan 2x is equal to root 2 so if we do tan to the minus 1 of root 2 that will be what 2x equals so on your calculator inverse tan of that is 0 0.95531 but that's what is 2x is equal so if we just divide that by 2 we will get um, 0 0.5 Four, seven, eight. But that's only one solution. That will be where P is. So in order to find Q, we need to think about our tan graph and where the other solution will be. So it's going to be where we've got pi plus. That will be in the same position. So here it will be pi plus the 0.95531. Um, and then if you divide that by 2, the other answer will be the 2.048. So this at P is 0 0.478 and at Q we've got 2.048. So there are the turning points or the x-coordinates of the turning points of the original graph. Now let's have a look at these transformations. The 2 inside the bracket, this is going to have the effect of all x coords are going to be times by a half so the graph is still going to have essentially the same shape but it's going to be squashed in and the minimum point for this transformation is still going to be at q so we're just going to be doing 2.048 divided by 2 which is equal to 1.02 Two. So that will be part one. For part two, because the transformation is a three minus double f of x, this minus times it by minus two is going to have the effect to reflect the graph and stretch it, but reflect it in the y axis, uh, x axis, sorry. So this p is going to come down here and the q is going to come up there. So the actual minimum point is going to be now looking at the p coordinate. So the timesing by minus 2 is going to be a stretch and all the y coordinates would times by minus 2 and then adding 3 on that's going to shift the graph up 3 but both of those transformations are going to affect the y coordinate but because we've got this flip the x coordinate of the minimum point because that's what we're going to be asked about is just going to be this point at p so the value doesn't change but because the the max is then flipped it's going to be the same as the 0.478 this is the integration question where integration appeared on a previous exam paper as a limit. So this is saying the limit as the dx tends towards zero. So when that dx is getting very, very small, you've just literally got the, um, the height of the strip. Um, and all you're doing is summing up all those heights. So it's the same as finding the area under the curve between 4 and 9. So all you've got to do is integrate between 4 and 9 of root x, which is x to the half with respect to x. That's what this notation means. So integrating, add 1 on and divide by the new power. When you divide by 3 over 2, it's the same as times in by 2 thirds. And we need to go between 4 and 9. So putting 9 in, square root of 9 is 3. 3 cubed is 27. And 2 thirds of 27 is 18. Putting 4 in, square root of 4 is 2. 2 cubed is 8. And then we've got 16 over 3. And so 18 minus 16 over 3 is 12 and 2 thirds or 38 over Thank you so much for watching if you're still with me at this point. Um, hopefully you have found that useful. So do give it a like and subscribe. Good luck with your revision and your exams this summer. And I will see you on the next one.